this is going to be a quick video just to show you what Quasar is. I also want to go over why it's my favorite front-end framework on the internet, hands down, and what to do next if you want to start building projects using Quasar. And what better way to begin than writing some Quasar code. So let's do it. First, we're going to install the Quasar CLI tool. And we'll install that globally, and it's called at Quasar slash CLI. And notice that I'm using NPM to install the Quasar CLI tool. The community recommends that you use NPM to install global packages, and then Yarn to install local packages. So now that that's done, let's just see the command list. And yep, that's working. And now to create an app, we can just say Quasar create, and we'll call this Quasar dash play. Now I'm also going to add branch next. And the reason I'm doing that is because the next branch isn't out yet, but it will be soon. This is for support with Vue 3. So this part here, you probably won't have to add on because it's likely standard by now. So let's run that and it's going to ask us a few questions. I'm going to leave most of it as the default and let's use ESLint, but notice we've also got TypeScript support. We can use Vuex out of the box and we've also got Axios support. Moving on, we'll go standard. And yes, we're going to use Yarn to install our dependencies. Then when this is done, I'll CD into our directory and then start running the project. Sweet, CD Quasar dash play, open that in Visual Studio Code, and there we go. Now to enter a development environment, we can use Quasar CLI once again, Quasar dev, it's as simple as that. And by the way, in this video, we'll be using the Quasar CLI tool, but just know that you can also use the Vue CLI or even UMD in order to get up and running with Quasar. But we in the community prefer using Quasar CLI because it comes with a whole bunch of really cool benefits which we'll talk about later on. So here we go. We've got our Quasar app up and running. If I come back here and then I jump into index.view, that's the logo that you're seeing on the main screen there. And let's just replace that with some text. So how about we just say, hello there. I'm getting sick of the hello world example. So let's change the word to there. And then I'm also going to add here column, just because it makes it a little bit easier to work with for the stuff we're going to do in this video. And there we go, it's working. Now let's just play with some of the components because the Quasar's component library really is the heart of Quasar. I can come here and say Q-input, and let's say V-model is equal to name, and we'll model some data down here. Data, return an object, and then we can say name is equal to an empty string. Save that, and we now have that input. And I can put in here Luke as my name. So it looks a little bit bland at the moment, so let's play around with this a little bit. And I'm gonna change the formatting to something that's a little bit more standard in the view community. Let's give it a label equal to name. And there we go, we get this really cool label. Let me just refresh the page there. Yeah, which floats up to the top, and that's following the material design spec. So that's pretty cool. What else can we do? We can also say outlined. And before we move on, how about I get out of full screen and we just change the formatting a bit here. And there we go. So let's say outlined there. And now we've got the same thing, but with a really nice outline, just so it stands out a little bit more. We can also say filled. This is one of my favorite to use, which fills it in with a little bit of a gray background. And another one we have is of course color. And Quasar gives us a whole lot of colors out of the box. So let's just use green in this example. And notice that we get a little bit of a green effect now, but I could also say green dash three, and that would also work and give us kind of a lighter green color. And then of course a higher number like nine will give us a darker green color. And there we go. There is a ton more that you can do with Q input, but that's just a basic example. And I love that everything just looks beautiful and follows the material design spec out of the box. So let's take a look at another one. How about Q dash button? And we'll do it this way. And now let's give this button a label and I'll call it notify me. Come back, get rid of that, save that. And there we go, we've got the button there. What else can we do? Now by default, everything is capitalized. So we can say no dash caps. And now that gets rid of the capitalization. We can also give this an icon. So let's set it to the message icon. And there we go. And by the way, you can use just about any icon set you like. And Quasar comes with a ton of icon sets, the popular ones out of the box, which is really, really cool. And it's super easy to change them, but that's for another video. We can change the color of this, for example, to gray nine. And we can also change 
the text color. So I just wanted to show you one of the utility classes that we get out of the box, like text-green-2. That gives us a nice little sort of green color of the text. We can also change the size equal to something like extra small. And that goes all the way up to extra large. So there's just a tiny taste. There's some of the simpler components. There are some really cool, geniusly designed components like the table component, the card components, the list components. There's a ton of them, but you can check the docs for all of that. Let's keep this video short. We can also say when this is clicked, handle button clicked. And this gives me the opportunity to now show you one of Quasar's many plugins. So let's copy that, come down here and create a method methods and paste that straight in there now i can say this dot dollar sign q and that gives us access to quasar's global object and then we can say notify and notify is a plugin available through quasar so we're going to pass that an object and give it a message that says quasar will blow your mind and i think the more you play around with this framework the more that is true now i'm going to open up the console here and notice now that if I press this, it actually doesn't work. So this dot dollar sign Q dot notify is not a function. This is exactly what we want because by default, Quasar doesn't use any components, any plugins or any features that you don't opt into, which is fantastic because it means that we always end up with a very, very small bundle size. Okay, in fact, this Q button component, what Quasar is doing behind the scenes is it's noticing that you're using the Q button component and therefore pulling it in from the library. So we don't have to import it manually. However, we still maintain a very small bundle size. It's really, really cool. Now, in order to use this component here, the notify component, we can open up quasar.conf.js. In fact, let me show you where that actually lives. Here it is here, quasar.conf.js. And now if I search for the word plugin, here we go. These are the Quasar plugins that we are opting in to use. And now I can say notify. Oh, and I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be a capital N. And there we go. Let's refresh the page, press the button, and there we go. Quasar will blow your mind. And now, of course, we have a whole bunch of stuff we can add in here. Like we can change the color to green. And then how about we change the position as well? Let's set it to bottom left. Save that. Run this. And now it shows up in the bottom left and it's green. Pretty cool stuff. Now let's just say that you're ready to build your application. We can open up the console and say Quasar build. And that's going to go ahead and build our application. In fact, let's go back into full screen in our editor now. So there we go. Our application's been built and we now have this dist directory. And if we jump in there, we can see we have a folder called SPA. So by default, Quasar will build your application as a single page application, an SPA. So if we jump in here, we can see that all of the assets are there ready to go. And check this out. If I go CD disk, so I jump into this directory here, and then I jump into the SPA directory, I can say Quasar serve, and that's it. We are now serving our SPA application. So if I control click here, we have the same thing, but now this version of the application has been built, it's minified, and it's gonna be very, very performant. And let's just check that it works, and it does. So I really wanna stress this. The bundle size of what we just built is going to be very, very small because Quasar does some awesome stuff behind the scenes, tree shaking, automatic cache busting, and all that good stuff that you would expect from a modern application. Now, it gets even better. Check this out. If I go back, back to Quasar Play, and I say Quasar Build, this time I add the M flag, which means mode, and we change that to PWA. Quasar is going to build a PWA application for us as well. So notice we have the SPA directory here, and when that's done, we're also going to get a PWA directory. And behind the scenes, Quasar is going to do some smart stuff to make sure that your application runs even faster now that it's a PWA. And notice that we have this new source-pwa directory, so this is where you can add your custom PWA code. But honestly, a lot of you will never even need to touch that because it's all handled for you behind the scenes. Now, once again, we can go CD into dist, CD into PWA, Quasar, serve, and now that's going to serve our PWA application and check this out. Since it's a PWA, oh, I've actually already installed it. You can actually click on the button up here in Google Chrome, which will allow you to install your application 
on your desktop, or it even works on mobile phones as well. So there we go, I can open up my application now as a PWA. How cool is that? Moving on, crossing out of that. Let me just cancel this server here. And once again, I wanna emphasize something here because when I first started using Quasar, I was tempted to feel like it was too bloated. With all these features and components available to me, I would think to myself, won't I end up having a massive bundle size? And once again, only components you tell Quasar to use, only components you actually use in your application are pulled in. It's wonderfully designed so that you start with a tiny, clean application and can simply add pieces when you actually need them. It's also doing optimizations like code splitting, automatic cache busting, minification so that your bundle size is tiny, and all that jazz so that your applications run really, really fast and with a very small bundle size when it's deployed. If none of what I just said makes sense to you, that's totally fine. Just keep following along and you'll learn in time. Okay, moving on. Let's just say that I want to use a component globally. So for example, let me just scroll up here. What if I want to use the day.js library and just spit out the current day? So for example, just day.js like that, and maybe just call it as a function so that I get the current time. You might be thinking, well, just throw day.js onto the view prototype. So let me just come back here, go back to our directory and say, yarn add day.js. And so what you might then look for is, well, let me have a look at the part where view is created. And so you might go into the source directory and expect to see a main.js file, but it's not there. And there's no index.js file either. And so you might freak out at this point and think, well, how can I use Quasar when I can't even extend it? And the answer to that is boot files. So Quasar uses something called boot files. And basically, these are files that are run when your application first starts, and they allow you to hook into the view instance and a whole bunch of other stuff involved in your application. So let's have a look at what that looks like. We can create a new boot file by saying Quasar new boot and I'm going to call this one day.js. So let's come up here to boot, there's our boot file. And this is where we can hook into a whole bunch of functionality available to us. So I'm just gonna cross all of this out and change it to context. And then I'm going to console.log that just so you can see what we've got to play with here. And one more thing, in order to use a boot file, you have to come into your quasar.conf, to your quasar.conf file. And if you search for the word boot, now you just enter it in as a string, day.js. Okay, so day.js here is lining up with the string day.js up here in the boot file. Save that. It's gonna go and do its thing. Now if I open this up, refresh the page. Ah, oh, it's squawking at us because day.js isn't a function. So let's just come back here and we'll cross that out for now. Refresh the page and there we go, it's working again. And this is the context, basically, all of the stuff that we can hook into in our application. So we've got the app itself, which has all of the configuration options, directives, everything is just like sitting inside of there ready for you to play around with. We have access to view router. If you were using Vuex, then you would also have access to the store. And that means that we can do stuff like this. Check it out. We can say context.app.config.global properties dot dollar sign day js and then i can come up here and import day js from day js and we can set this equal to day js so basically we're importing day js and then we're setting it as a global property on our view instance save that come back to index.view and let's whack it in there and see if it works dollar sign day js and there we go, it works. Now we have access to that library. So that's how we extend view. And there's a couple of benefits here. So one of the main benefits is that it keeps our code really clean. It gives us access to more than just the view instance, which I'll show you in a second. And it also allows Quasar CLI to do some really cool stuff, especially in terms of exporting options. So let's come back to day.js. And I just wanna give you some ideas of what else that you can do here. We could pull out, for example, uh, router, store, and app. And we could say, 
router dot before each. This is especially useful for doing authentication type stuff. We could say store dot commit if we want to commit something to the store before the application starts. We could say app dot use if there's a certain library that you want to use in your application. So things like directive libraries or just any view plugin that you want available to your application. That's all made available to us using boot files. Now this actually raises a question. What if I use the same functionality over and over again in boot files, like across applications? And what if a lot of my project setup is the same across all of my applications? Now for that, we can use app extensions and Quasar's app extensions capabilities are truly mind blowing. Every inch of a Quasar application has been beautifully architectured so that it's simple to use if you're just getting started, but easy to extend if you're a power user. Now, because the next version of Quasar is still in beta, it's difficult for me to show you an app extension because they still need to be upgraded to the latest version, but this is how you would install one by saying Quasar extension add, and when it's available, I highly recommend checking out at Quasar slash Q calendar. And this extension is just mind blowing. It is unbelievably flexible, unbelievably customizable. You could literally recreate the Google Calendar front end using this extension. It's really insanely cool and I highly recommend you check it out. And if you do wanna take a look at some of Quasar's app extensions, then check out the Quasar, I think it's Discover extensions. Let's say app extensions. Here it is here. This page has got all of the official Quasar app extensions sitting on it, but then a ton of them that are available to you through the community by clicking this button. So that's really cool. And the last thing I wanna do is show you some of the other build options that are available to us. So let's say Quasar build help. And let me just open this up a little bit wider and scroll up. Now notice under modes, we've got all of the options available to us. And I want you to know that all of these build options have been very well crafted. They're not just an afterthought. They are at the core of how Quasar has been built. Okay, so it's not like, oh, let's just export to these other options and see what happens. No, Quasar exports to these different platforms and it does it very, very well. So we've got SPA, which is the default. We can also build a server-side rendered application, a PWA, which is a great way to get a little bit of extra caching and like um, smartness out of the box. We've also got Cordova and Capacitor, which basically allows you to export to mobile platforms like Android and iOS. You've got Electron, so you can export to desktop platforms like Windows, Linux, and Mac. And also a BEX, which is basically a browser extension. So you can turn a Quasar application into a browser extension. How cool is that? And let me be abundantly clear here, having all of these build options doesn't bloat your other builds. Your SPA will remain a small file size, even if you decide to export to other platforms. It's great because if you're a novice developer starting out, you can start with an SPA and work up to other build modes when you're ready. So how cool is that? I just think it's amazing. So if you wanna write code that can export to all major platforms without ending up with bloated files, and if you want access to the single most impressive component library I have ever seen, then here's what I recommend you do next. One of two things, either go straight to the components section of the docs and start playing around, or watch the next video because we've only scratched the surface of the most impressive front-end framework I've ever seen. So have fun. And I honestly can't wait to see what you build using Quasar.